What's up, people? Uh, welcome back to the Not Dirt Bike Shed. Um, listen, here's a real quick, I'm going to try to make this quick, simple gas laws problems, all right? Now, there's some things you need to understand when we talk about temperature and pressure. Here you are, you're at the beach, you're at Topsail Beach, okay? And if you're at Topsail Beach in January and it's zero degrees Celsius outside, and you are at the beach, which means you are at sea level. Now, if you're at sea level, all the air particles above you are squeezing you, okay? And at sea level, you would be under one atmosphere of pressure. So if you're at the beach, and it's literally freezing cold outside, and you're at sea level, then you're at what we call STP. STP stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure, okay? Now, when we talk about STP, we don't use Celsius. We use units called Kelvin. So when we talk about STP, we really say STP is one atmosphere of pressure and 273 degrees Kelvin. What? 273? Let me show you. Now, if we were in the classroom and everything was normal, we could do a really simple lab to find out what this guy Kelvin did, okay? It's easily replicated in the high school uh, classroom. But what he did was he discovered what absolute zero was, okay? And he did that using Celsius temperature. Absolute zero means that you're so cold that the molecules and atoms aren't vibrating at all. That's what zero temperature means, all right? He determined that if you had zero degrees Celsius, which isn't really that cold, right? If you had zero degrees Celsius and you went backwards from there, you would have to go 273 Celsius units below zero to find the temperature that was so cold that gas molecules didn't vibrate or bounce off each other at all. So in Kelvin, 273 degrees Kelvin is equal to zero degrees Celsius. So if we boiled some water at 100 degrees Celsius, the temperature of boiling water is 373 degrees Kelvin. And that's really cool because what that means, what that means is all these temperature units are the same size. And we're all very glad that he did that. And the metric system was nice. That helps us out that these units are the same size. Does that make sense? Now, when we're doing problems with gas and we're doing the gas laws, you have to use Kelvin. If you don't use Kelvin, your answers will be wrong, okay? Even though these temperatures are the same size, you're going to get wrong answers unless you use Kelvin for temperature. I'm going to show you why. All right, here's Charles's law, okay? Charles's law says if you have a balloon, now this is the same balloon, if you have a balloon and you know the volume and you know the temperature, then if you don't pop the balloon or anything, if you change the temperature, you know what the new volume would be. Now, in this situation, the balloon in the second place, later, the balloon is smaller. So does that mean the temperature went down or it went up? Well, it went down. So let's do a, let's do a problem to show why we have to use Kelvin, okay? Let's say that you had a... 20 liter balloon and the temperature was one degree Celsius. And then you made the balloon colder. You put it somewhere, you know, that was a little bit colder. So let's say you took it down to negative three degrees Celsius. All right. What is the new volume of the balloon? Well, you would say negative three times 20 over one. So you're telling me that this balloon now has a volume of negative 60 liters. Hmm. So the balloon is so small 
that not only can we not see it, it's so small, it's smaller than zero, and it's disappeared, and it's gone into another dimension. That's ridiculous, right? Let's work this exact same problem again using Kelvin. Here's our problem. We had a balloon with a volume of 20 liters, right? And the temperature was 1 degree Celsius. That's 274 degrees Kelvin, right? And what is the new volume if we cool the balloon off to negative 3? Negative 3 degrees Celsius will be 270 degrees Kelvin. And we could work this problem and we wouldn't get a negative answer. I'm going to cheat because I can't do this one in my head. The balloon would have shrunk to a volume of 19.7 liters. So it just got a little bit smaller. See how it got a little bit colder? So it got a little bit smaller. So that's Charles's law, okay? Boyle's law is about taking a balloon and squeezing it. What happens to a balloon if you squeeze it? If you squeeze a balloon, we saw in the little video I made, it gets smaller. So we're, we're going to talk about atmosphere. Let's say you have a balloon, and it's at one atmosphere of pressure, and the volume of your balloon is 20 liters, and then you squeeze the balloon. Squeezing the balloon means you add more pressure. Let's say you doubled the pressure. You squeezed it. Now the balloon's under two atmospheres of pressure. What would the new volume of that balloon be? Well, the balloon would get smaller. So you would say PV, P1V1 equals P2V2. 1 times 20 over 2 atmospheres. The new volume of that balloon is 10 liters. You put it under twice as much pressure, it's going to be half as big. Does that make sense? So that's how simple Boyle's Law is. Okay, and our third law is Gay-Lussac's Law. And that's saying pressure over temperature is going to be equal to pressure over temperature. Now let's say you have a cylinder, like in a diesel engine, and there's some fuel in here. And if you add pressure, there's going to be some point where the volume is not going to get smaller, okay? Because the gas will just resist. The temperature here, if you make the pressure increase, you squeeze it really hard, the temperature is going to go up. You can see by this equation, if the pressure goes up, the temperature has to go up at exactly the same rate. I'll work one for you. All right, we'll say you have a, a gas at a pressure of two atmospheres. Pressure number one is two atmospheres, and the temperature is 273 degrees Kelvin. Okay, that means zero degrees Celsius, right? And then if you double the pressure to four atmospheres, what is the new temperature going to be? And we'll eighth grade math this. Right? I'm going to say 273 times 4 over 2. That's going to be equal to our new temperature up here. See, I just moved them around, 8th grade math. So if we double the pressure, we end up doubling the temperature. The temperature is now 546 degrees Kelvin. Right? It went from 273 to 546. Now, the last thing I want to show you is if we have PV equals PV, right? That's Boyle's Law. And if we have Charles's Law, V1, T1 is equal to V2, T2. That's Charles's Law, right? And if we have Gay-Lussac's Law, which is pressure over temperature, will result in the new pressure over the new temperature, you could combine all three of these guys' work into one formula called the combined gas law. So oftentimes, you'll just hear about the combined gas law, and that's it. It means the combination of these three different scientists' work. So I'm going to give you a couple of problems to try. 
I'm assigning you a worksheet called Gas Laws Short and Simple. Okay? It's going to have a few problems on it. I need you to work it and send me the picture back of it. We'll go over all the problems uh, on another video. Thanks. Goodbye from Not in the Dirt Bike Shed. Oh, no, wait. There's, there are on my table. There's, there's something dirt bikes right there. I know you're missing it. There we go. There we go. Worked it in there. Peace out, people.